Sprint Stopper is so easy to use that after pressing just six buttons, you can get your time in less than a minute. Watch this. First, open up Sprint Stopper. Then place your device down at the finish line and press deploy. Unless you're using wireless speakers to hear the beep sounds instead of audio cable or your device's built-in speakers, press no. If you're only timing yourself, press individual. Select the normal mode. Point the center of the blue crosshair along the finish line to any constant color area you wish, in this case the sky, and then press ready. Press start and walk towards the starting line. Notice the seconds until start countdown. You can enter any amount of time you want to give you enough time to walk to the starting line before you hear the beep sounds from your speakers. The default is 10. Use a larger time for longer distances. That was the on your marks beep. That was the set beep. And that was the go beep. Once I cross the finish line, the timer stops. It's just that simple. Notice disturbance at the bottom of the screen. That is the amount of change in scenery around the center of the blue crosshair. You want it to be as close to zero as possible. And if it goes over 25, detection will be triggered. So be sure to point the center of the blue crosshair at a solid motionless background. Let's talk about modes. Right now it's on standard. Use this mode to time anything that requires you to run through the finish line only once. 10 yards mode predicts a 40 yard dash from 10 yards. 10 meters prediction from 10 meters. 30 meters prediction from 30 meters. 200 meter indoor mode. 300 meter indoor mode. 400 meter indoor mode. 400 meter outdoor mode. 500 meters indoor mode. 600 meter indoor mode. 600 meter outdoor mode. 800 meter indoor mode. And 800 meter outdoor mode. When you press repeat, it turns repeat on or off. When you turn it on, it says enter seconds until repeat. That's how much time from the point you cross the finish line until it begins the seconds until start countdown, followed by the on your marks beep. Under performances is a list of your times from all runs, newest to oldest. Enter seconds until start. After you press the start button, that's the number of seconds until you hear the on your marks beep. I would just touch the text field for the number pad to appear. I'm going to enter a random number, like 14. And then I'm going to press start. As you see, it is counting down from 14 seconds. If you leave the text field empty, it will automatically be 10 seconds. If you leave the repeat text field empty, it will automatically be 30 seconds. There's a set beep, and there's a go beep. Now I'm going to move my arm in the center of the blue crosshair. Disturbance over 25%, and we have detection. As you see, the timer stopped. Now I'm going to press reset. Press reset anytime you want to go back to the main menu. And press restart anytime you want to restart the application, all the way back to the beginning of the setup process. Now I will show you another form of detection, the safe mode, which detects you based on your shirt color so that other people won't be detected when passing by, unlike the normal mode that detects nearly anything that crosses the finish line. Select detection mode, normal or safe. Choose safe. Stand in the center of the blue crosshair until detected appears. So now I will stand in the center of the blue crosshair and remain standing until detected appears. As you see, it's calibrating, which means it's determining the color of my shirt. The more you move, the longer it takes. By default, it's 10 seconds, and make sure you're wearing a solid colored shirt when doing this. As you see, detected appear. Now you're ready to go. Notice there is no disturbance at the bottom. That is because in the safe mode, detection is triggered by the color of the shirt you are wearing. When I move away from the center of the crosshair, nothing is detected. And when I move in the center of the crosshair, I'm detected. As you see, I'm walking in front of the camera with different color shirts on. And the only time I'm being detected is when I have a yellow color shirt on. Just like the normal mode, the safe mode is capable of repeating and it also has the same modes for running distances from 0 to 800 meters including predictions. Both the normal mode and safe mode have their benefits. If you're running an all out sprint like 100 meters, it is best to use the normal mode as it has very sensitive detection, great for detecting fast moving things. The safe mode is great for longer distances that require more time on the track such as 400 meters to 800 meters as it will help make sure the only thing that gets detected is you and not other people. Let's check out the competition mode. This time select multiple. 
The competition mode works exactly like the normal mode, except now you see a third text field. Enter amount of athletes. Simply enter the amount of athletes you want the time at once. I will type 8. Now I will go ahead and press start. As you see, a list of 8 times appeared. If you enter 5 athletes, then you will have a list of 5 times. Right now we have the usual countdown until start. I will simulate with my hands eight runners crossing the finish line. Notice what happens each time a runner passes the finish line. Their times will be immediately displayed in the results list in order from first to last. There are necessary conditions when using Sprint Stoppers competition mode for it to work correctly. First, each athlete should try not to wear the same color clothing. It makes it hard to detect one athlete from another when the race is tight with little to no gap between athletes. Next, try to group athletes together that do not have similar performances. That is because cameras do not have depth perception. So if two or more athletes are all running side by side, it will only result in one time. So simply put, the greater the gap between athletes crossing the finish line, the better it works. The competition mode has all the distance modes that the normal and safe modes have except for the prediction modes. Also like the normal and safe mode, the competition mode has the ability to repeat. There are various methods to receive the beep sounds while at the starting line when using Sprint Stopper. If you're close enough, you can use the device's built-in speakers. You can use 3.5 millimeter audio cable and connect your device to speakers. Or just use Bluetooth speakers. Let's talk about using Bluetooth speakers. This is where things get very important. This here is a Bluetooth speaker. Now when using Bluetooth speakers, it takes time from sound emitted from your device to travel through a wireless signal to reach your Bluetooth speakers before you can hear it. That sound delay can make Sprint Stopper's timing very inaccurate. So to compensate that, Sprint Stopper has its own built-in Bluetooth detection, separate from your device's default detection. This allows Sprint Stopper to directly communicate with your Bluetooth device and gather information from it to determine the speed of sound emitted from your device through the signal to the Bluetooth speakers, so it can correct it and maintain timing accuracy. Trust me, this is not hard to use, just follow directions and everything will be fine. If you don't follow directions, you might end up with some very inaccurate times. First, go to your Bluetooth settings and make sure your Bluetooth speaker is paired or bonded with your device. That simply means you have used the speaker before and your device remembers its identity and should connect to the speaker automatically when it's turned on and within its appropriate range to your device. You only need to do this once, usually when you first use your speaker. Now open up Sprint Stopper. At this point, your device's Bluetooth detection should be turned off. Don't worry, Sprint Stopper does that automatically. Now just go to the starting line with your Bluetooth speaker turned off, then turn it on and place it down. Are you using a wireless speaker? Select yes. Now Sprint Stopper is scanning for the wireless signal from your speaker. Once the wireless signal is received, Sprint Stopper directly communicates with your speaker gathering information to determine the speed of sound data traveling across the signal. This allows it to compensate for any sound delay when receiving the go beep so that the timing accuracy remains accurate. Now if the distance between your wireless speaker and your device is short, it's actually okay for your speakers to be on the ground. But if the distance between your wireless speakers and your device is very far, if you're trying to do something like 100 meters, it's actually necessary to raise your speakers off the ground. That's what this tripod is for. Same Bluetooth speaker, just elevated off the ground. That gives you a better signal over such a long distance. Notice the camera button. This button allows you to change between your device's front and back camera as you may find that Sprint Stopper is easy to use using the back camera. Others may find that it's easy to use when using the front camera. It all depends on your preference. This button will only appear if your device has more than one camera. Finally, there's the language button. When pressed, it allows you to switch between the 19 built-in languages that Sprint Stopper has. Sprint Stopper's auto adjust feature is not only good for cloud and shade protection, it can also be used to quickly change the scenery. The scenery at the center of the crosshair was just green. After adjustment, it becomes blue. The scenery at the center of the crosshair was just blue. And after adjustment, 
it becomes green. A quicker way to make adjustments to the background without having to wait for adjusting is press start and reset. As you see the disturbance was very high after I moved the camera from the green area to the blue area and it immediately became low. Press start and reset and the same thing happened again making the green area around the center of the crosshair the new background to base disturbance and detection off of. You may notice that sometimes I like to put a white barrel in the center of the crosshair. That is not necessary as I only do it to create a constant colored background around the center of the crosshair. That red brick wall is not constant due to the yellow spaces between the red bricks. When the wind blows and the camera moves, the disturbance will greatly increase due to the center of the crosshair constantly moving from red to yellow instead of constantly keeping the red background. With the white barrel in place, the background around the center of the crosshair is constantly white and the disturbance stays very close to zero. If the background around the center of the crosshair is consistent in color such as the green grass, then just simply point the crosshair across the finish line at a spot in the grass and make sure you are not wearing green. As long as the disturbance is low and you look nothing like the background around the center of the crosshair, you will be detected. If you're not sure, stand in front of the center of the crosshair and make sure the disturbance is at least over 30. When using the competition mode, you may want to place a white barrel or similar object in the center of the crosshair. If you can't, then at least make sure none of the athletes look anything like the area around the center of the crosshair in terms of color. This will help ensure that all athletes get detected. Now the purpose of this scene is not only to show you that you can use Sprint Stopper without a tripod at all and instead just simply place your device on the ground at the finish line with a rock or any other creative object you wish, in this case a water bottle. This scene is also to show you that when you cannot quickly find a constant colored background to point the crosshair at, then you can always point the center of the crosshair diagonally across the finish line right into the sky and it will work just fine thanks to the built-in cloud and shade protection. Last, when crossing the finish line, make sure the center of the crosshair is pointing anywhere above your kneecaps and below your shoulders to help ensure you get detected. Well, that's the end of the instruction video. If you feel like I didn't explain something thoroughly or you're still not clear about something, just send me a message on the Sprint Stopper Facebook page or email me with the email address provided below and I'll make another video. Now, thanks to Sprint Stopper, you no longer have to rely on someone's stopwatch. You no longer have to rely on somebody's word. You can rely on logic. You can rely on science, mathematics, truth, not judgment and opinion. So go on now. Go make yourselves better.